Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, guys. Guys, did I just slur? I think I did. Okay, hi guys. My name is Jason Chen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. What I'm reading, life sucks. Life's miserable. It's cold outside. It's in New York. It's winter. I'm tired. I work a really late shift because I had to teach kids in LA, but I live in New York City. So there's a time difference, you know? And so when it's like three to six for them, it's six to nine for me. And so I get off work at nine. And by then, I don't know what it is. I'm just exhausted. Maybe it's because, you know, my life is this big void that I keep trying to fill, but I can't fill it. Anyway, so this is my second installment, and I want to review not a new book today, but a classic, because you got to review classics sometimes, too. Sometimes people forget about them. You know, sometimes Anthony Fantano just reviews freaking Tribe Called Quest or My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. So today I'm going to review one of literature's My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasies. I wish I could just keep complaining about life. You know, actually, that was amazing. You guys should start YouTube channels. Uh, it's great therapy for those who, like me, are starving artists, so you can't afford therapy. Unless you want to go groveling to your parents to help you afford therapy, but we all know we don't want that, right? Well, today I want to review what we talk about when we talk about love by Raymond Carver. You might have actually heard of this book, this collection of short stories from a very important movie that came out, I want to say 2014 or 2015. Birdman. So the main character in Birdman actually is directing this hit play that's inspired by one of the stories in this book. So maybe that's why it sounds familiar. What else about Raymond Carver? So Raymond Carver is this, this guy who writes about I don't know how shitty American life is in the Reagan era. You know, it's about how we live in this world of mid-aged housewives who eat diet Cheez-Its and have garage sales and use, like, really toxic sprays to kill their slugs in their gardens with really tacky house plants and it's like oh gosh it's just throw up america's just pure throw up and it's awful that we live in it and he somehow finds the the beauty in it and so that's why i like raymond carver so this is his collection of short stories that is one of his more popular ones another one that you might have heard of is called cathedral and that has his most important work he ever contributed to the american canon Cathedral is about this asshole who watches TV and smokes weed all day, but his wife knows this blind guy. Blind guy comes over, and I don't want to spoil it for you too much, but the blind guy and the main character have this very spiritual moment. And that's what touches me so much about Raymond Carver. You know, our lives in America are such shit, you know. Uh, back then, it was just watching... I don't know what they watched in the 80s, cop procedurals on public television and going to the supermarket to buy your stupid ass diet Cheez-Its and drinking, drinking RC Cola and being like, yep, we live in the greatest country on earth. And it's like, wow, I can't believe that this is the greatest country on earth, but our lives full of crap. In the 2010s and oh gosh, now it's 2020s. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that's already the 2020s. Anyways, 2020s are like that too, right? We go to Whole Foods, we, we buy organic, and we, and, and we don't know why we even buy it. We just do it to feel ethical, even though we all know we're all terrible human beings. I don't know why we're trying to pretend we're not terrible human beings by buying organic produce. You know, I don't know you, you spend your day swiping through TikTok, Instagram, you have shallow conversations with your friends, uh, you, get, you, you get these fake 
scam calls on your smart phone. Uh, you might have a 14 year old cousin who's more successful than you because she has an important TikTok following. I don't know. Life in America sucks. It's miserable. Oh gosh, you know. And these days, Christmas isn't even alive anymore. We just, we just, we just, we keep our lights on, yeah, like outside our houses, even in the middle of like April or May, because no one gives a shit anymore about uh, obeying uh, ceremony and, you know. What else do we have to look forward to in America? Super Bowl. So one of our greatest rituals in America is this big TV show. Oh, gosh, that sounds like such a cultural wasteland. What I'm saying is America feels like that sometimes. And that's why I need to read Carver. And that's why I think a lot of people need to read Carver. Because he shows you, in the midst of this wasteland, there's just such raw beauty and emotion and there are real human beings who are consuming the rc cola and there are these real human beings who have nothing better to do than to go to salvation army to thrift nine dollar lamps than to feel good because they got deals on nine dollar lamps i'm saying that because uh i i went to goodwill when i first moved to new york i bought this nine dollar lamp and i thought that was so significant i don't know what it was about me you know because that's not what love is a uh, life is life is love I wanted to say life is love. That's not what life is. Life is love. Life is, you know, real human connection. Life is going to Barcelona with with a with a beautiful woman or a beautiful man. Uh, life is accomplishing things. Uh, life is experiencing the terror of new challenges. Life is going to church and singing with a hundred people the same song about God. Life is things like that. But we live in this fucking American wasteland where we all we care about is like buying $9 lamps at Goodwill or, you know, cutting coupons for JCPenney or, or, or freaking, or, or freaking buying like, like triangle tumbler basket shit at that part of Target where they sell you really, really trendy houseware for housewives who are trying to fill their meaningless lives by buying shit they saw on Instagram. You know, America's this fucking wasteland. But the point is that <laughs> the point is that Raymond Carver reminds me that no matter how much America feels like a wasteland, the people here are beautiful. You have to read these short stories, man. Uh, they make me want to cry. You know, I'll just share with you my favorite story. One more thing. I know it's a good story. You know, I know it's a good story because I remember the characters' names. I'm looking at the story right now, but I can tell you off the bat, um, there's this main character and his wife's Maxine and his uh, 15-year-old daughter. Her name's Ray. I know it's a good story because I care about these characters so much that I remember their names. In the same way that you know that you liked a person when the next day you remember that person's name. You know, remembering names shows you what mattered to you in retrospect and you know it's about it's about this family falling apart but in their falling apart they each start to reveal who they really are and his 15 year old daughter ray she's she's spiritually hungry because she has this uh dysfunctional family and 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 she starts spouting wisdom you know she starts talking about um how how spiritual health can relate to your, your physical health. If you're spiritually unhealthy, you might start to, you know, feel stressed, get sick. Uh, she makes claims that uh, diabetes and cancer start in the brain. And I'll be perfectly honest with you. You can uh, unsubscribe if you want to this point. I'm spiritually kooky. I believe uh, what Ray believes. Gosh, this YouTube channel is going to become really unpopular really quickly because I have a lot of unpopular kooky views, like a lot of Americans, because we live in this fucking wasteland that drives us crazy, and so we all start having crazy ideas. Anyways, it's not much of a story. It's just the main character has a fight with his, with his, with his wife and his fifteen-year-old daughter, and the daughter and the mom are just like, "Get the fuck out!" And a lot of the stories in here are like that. A lot of divorce. Oh gosh, there's this really weird, sad short story where this this, this homunculus of a weird, shriveled old man, he's he's in love with these fish. 
that he keeps in this pond. And originally he he, he tries to uh, produce something like a farm. I don't quite understand it because sometimes Raymond Carver's stories are hard to understand because that's this really weird style where you get the idea that he wrote it completely idiotically without any intention of telling the story and publishing it to everyone. So sometimes he, he leaves details out because you get the impression that just being a fucking idiot when he writes these, he's not really thinking about uh, who's going to read it. Anyways, I'm trying to do this in one take, so sometimes I ramble to keep the momentum going because I'm not going to edit this video. Uh, I prefer to do things in one take. So this homunculus of a shriveled old man, he 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 has this fish farm, and you know obviously his intention is originally to maybe sell the fish, eat the fish, have someone eat the fish. I don't know, but he's so alone that he 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 falls in love with the fish. The fish become the only things that matter in his life. It makes me so sad. You know, he's that lonely that he, he gets married to a fucking pond of fish. <laughs> it's, it's really weird. Raymond Carver's stories are really weird, but that guy's so alone. But he's beautifully alone, you know, because when you're alone, you're flawed, and that makes you really beautiful. And I also want to just mention, oh gosh, this other story... Of this guy who's miserable. All his characters are miserable. Uh, it's a good reminder, by the way, that, you know, uh, sometimes you think, oh, when I get older, I'll be wiser and I'll be more peaceful. No, life's going to keep fucking sucking when you're 45. Raymond Carver is a good reminder of that. If you're 26, like me, enjoy being 26. If you're 23, enjoy being 23. If you're 30, enjoy being 30. Because let me tell you, uh, Raymond Carver's characters, they're usually middle-aged and their lives fucking suck. So don't look forward to getting older. Uh, gosh, there's this character who's middle-aged, life sucks, and he just goes to a bingo night. <laughs> and it's just so funny because it's freaking bingo, man. <laughs> uh, just chill out. But he does not chill out of the bingo night because his life's miserable. And when your life's miserable, you never chill out. So he sees, he sees this uh, younger couple... And he's really jealous of them just because they're young. <laughs> and they cheat at bingo. Uh, you have to pay a dollar per card to play uh, this this night of bingo. And the, the couple, sometimes they play these cards without paying a dollar for them. And this dude just gets fucking furious. <laughs> and he's like, he, uh, he, he tells his wife, like, he, word for word, this is the worst bingo night in history. And when I read that, I just cracked up. And he's just that really vindictive, middle-aged American man, you know, who, who he has this Batman complex where he has to solve everything he sees in front of him because his life's fucking miserable. So he has to imagine himself as a superhero uh, to compensate for the fact that he's fucking miserable. And he goes up to the couple and then he's like, hey, 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 I know what you're doing. And the couple's like, Dude, chill the fuck out. It's a bingo. And he's like, ah! So that's Raymond Carver. Uh, it's it's a it's fucking it's fucking wild reading Raymond Carver. I highly suggest it. It oh my thumb just hooked my necklace. That's okay. He was a flawed man in real life. He, you know, he went through divorce. He was not a perfect husband. He 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 was he was quite the alcoholic but if you are flawed i would recommend that you read raymond carver cuz if you are flawed you'll read him and you will feel very loved that's my review for today i hope you feel loved